I'm Holly Constant. And I'm Maddie Hockaday. We really love Parks and Rec, and we really love behind-the-scenes details. So we're researching everything from DVD extras like deleted scenes and commentaries, plus interviewing cast and crew who actually worked on the show. We also bring on guests and friends to geek out about everything Parks. So join us, you tropical fish. This is literally the best Parks and Rec rewatch podcast. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals, and there's also therapy, too. You guys. Ooh, <clears throat> you guys. <laughs> we have such an incredible show today. Uh, I'm so excited. We have the amazing Yvonne Jordan who played Councilman Hauser. We really hit it off right away. I mean, I would say um, he's just our people as far as like therapy. He studied psychology. Uh, he took a break from acting. So we spent the first couple, I don't even know, like 15, 20 minutes talking about that, which was so lovely, um, you know, because acting just wasn't for him at the time. And I, and I feel like so many actors go through that where they just need to take a break. Um, but it's hard to take a break because you're like, oh, no, people will forget about me and whatever. But you have to do what's right for you. So I really commend him for doing that. Uh, and then, you know, working in psychology, I'll let him tell the story. But um, I just wanted to make it clear that it was so lovely and so nice and kind. I felt lighter afterwards because, um, yeah, we were just very um, in tune with energy, I feel. Does that make sense? I know it sounds very like woo woo spiritual, but it was woo-woo and spiritual and I liked it. So, <laughs> uh, Maddie is not with me today on this one. Um, she is still with her sweet Killian baby. Um, so she should be joining us soon, hopefully. But, um, I'm so glad that I got to talk to Yvonne's and we, um, you know, make sure you follow him. I'm going to tag him below in the show notes, but I'm also going to tag him in our Instagram. He is on a Paxlovid commercial. I get right into it and I talk about how I was so excited to see him because this is when he came back from his break. Um, it was amazing. Um, and then uh, he's also in Single Drunk Female. So check that out. But um, yeah, I'm really excited that we got a chance to talk. So the, he's in so many episodes. So I'm just going to let you guys enjoy the uh, conversation. But please let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast because that's how people find us. That's how we can spread the joy of Parks and Rec. Please, please, please. I'm begging to, uh, <laughs> you know, write that review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And then subscribe to Bonus Pods for $3 a month. If you want extra content um, from me, my comedy, and we'll talk about parks as well. Um, so please do that. And I hope to see you guys next time. But other than that, uh, yeah, please welcome the amazing, spiritual, wonderful, just nicest man, uh, Councilman Hauser and Yvonne Jordan. Also, I don't know who needs to hear this, and I'm sorry for blocking um, the time with Yvonne's, but I, I, would, I think he would approve of me saying this. Take that trip. Do that thing that you've been putting off, or if you can afford it, or if you can figure out a way to like use points or use some of your savings or whatever, because if, I don't know, I just feel like we are all in a moment of like, oh my God, I'm like, there's so much going on. We're working really hard, you know, all these things. Well, maybe I'm just projecting on you, but I know there are other people out there. So if you need to do that thing, if you need to take that trip, if you need to maybe just go away for one literal day to just take a break from what is happening in this, like zoom out is what I'm saying. Zoom out, come back. And yeah. And I think that that is also um, kind of what Yvonne's would talk about with his break too. So I'm just saying. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's acting, it can be anything. So, okay. That's my end for my soapbox. I'm just telling you, do what you need to do. Okay. Please enjoy Yvonne's. This was so fun. Thank you, Yvonne's for coming on. Okay. Bye. And there's also therapy too. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Hi, Holly. Yay, thank you so much for being here. Hi, how oh, are you're you? You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. What a dream come true to see you here. Uh, oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I wanted to uh, mention, too, I was going to say it in the email, and then I was like, I'll just save it. I saw you in the Paxlovid commercial, and I was like, oh, my God, good for oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's my, uh, uh, my way back into the industry because I had taken time off after oh, Park okay. Recreation. Yeah, I took about five years off. Wow. Okay. Just, yeah. What led to that so, decision? Do you mind asking? You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. No, we can talk about it. I'm I'm open book in terms of what you want to talk about regarding parks and career stuff. Um, 
You're an actress, yeah. aren't you? I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. So I'm in the Southeast. And so I totally, I mean, I understand without even having to ask um, Mm -hmm. why you would want to take a break, but it's (laughs) different for each person. So (laughs) yeah, it is different for each person. So um, yeah, it worked out. uh, um, I mean, I was very grateful, of course, to have gotten Parks and Recreation. But I what a lot of people don't know is while I got Parks the same time I was accepted into grad school for clinical psychology. Oh, my God. So I was doing classes all day Saturday and then shooting parks on the weeks that they asked me to come in. Uh, well, so, congratulations on getting accepted to that, though. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So that was what, what was going on when I was doing parks. So um, I think if I was more a more um, business-minded actor, I would have taken what was going on with parks and parlayed into other things. But that wasn't where my thoughts were at the time. You were just, I was doing what I love, but I also had another side to me. I love psychology and what that brings. So I was exploring that side as well because I was getting so disillusioned with the business being in California and parks yeah. happened. Of course, you know, they always say you book a trip, you want to get a job, book, book a trip somewhere. And yep. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with the industry for now. Let me just go in a different direction. And then parks came along. <laughs> So oh my gosh. It just made it. Yeah. And then after Parks you took um another break or was that something where you a- after Parks you kind of went forward with it? Yeah, after Parks I that's what it was is I was still doing the grad program and doing oh. Parks at the same time and I was working as a therapist with um oh. with family and children. So when I would get the call, I would reschedule because I was going to the school system so I was able to pick a different time when I would take the kids out to do therapy with them. So it allowed me to switch my schedule around when I had to jump into, uh, to do a, a, a spot with um, Parks and Recreation, which started out the first time I did it, I thought, I, I thought they didn't like me because, <laughs> you know, I wasn't new to the, the comedy where they would rewrite your jokes in the moment and then come back and sure. give you something else to do. So I wasn't familiar with that process as much. So I thought, Oh, they, they didn't like what I was doing. So they changed the joke because it wasn't landing the way they wanted it to. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And moved on. And my agent called me back. I think it was a year later because it was the first season that I was introduced. And then a year later, I said, Oh, they want you back. I was like, really? Uh, I thought they didn't. She's like, no, they want you back. They like the councilman house and they, they have ideas for it. And I was like, okay, I'll go with the flow. And, and then subsequently following all the other, um, episodes came up as a result of it. Oh my God, that is amazing. I have so many yeah. things to respond to, to what you yeah. said. Okay, first of all, <laughs> first of all, congratulations on the therapy. We love therapy here. Our tagline is there's also therapy too, because Maddie, my co-host who just had a baby, which is why she's not here, uh, oh, is a music gosh, therapist. Congratulations to her. Oh my gosh, yes, thank you. And yes. uh, I'm accepting the thank you for her. <laughs> yes. I'm an auntie, so I'm oh, accepting great. it too. <laughs> great, great. Um, but anyways um she is a music therapist um she's not doing music therapy right now but that's what she mm-hmm. studied we met in school um oh, do for music and she mm-hmm. was studying music therapy and i was doing more performance kind of stuff but we always talk mm-hmm. about how much we love therapists and therapy and all that stuff so very well uh like we respect it so much so i'm so oh, glad thank you so do i yeah. actually because i know it's very helpful for a lot of people Oh my gosh, especially families. She was working so closely with families Mm -hmm. and how to best serve their kids and their, you know, environment around them because she was working Mm -hmm. her one of her passions is um, autism and working with autistic children and families. And she was very, very she is still very passionate about that. So Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that um, she's going to get to hear this. And (laughs) wow, this is why actually, when I left, I did leave after Parks and Recreation, I did a couple episodic stuff. But at the same time, I, um, it wasn't fun. The auditioning process wasn't fun for me anymore. I used mm-hmm. to look, I used to look forward to them. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with this one? It became where I was, um, I, I was getting anxiety around auditioning. Yeah. And I was like, why? It, it, something's changed and I need to figure it out. So let me just take a back. And I, and I, and I accepted a position, uh, as a supervisor for a regional center where we provide services to the development of the disabled community autism wow. spectrum and every in and, and it was the adult division so there was people that have gone through our system there are now adults living in in, in different uh, facilities that we we funded for so mm-hmm. i ended up taking a position as a supervisor and i had 13 staff that i supervised that actually went out and did the 
direct care, which I couldn't do because I'm an empath. And it would mm-hmm. just rip me apart to keep. That's why I left therapy. I was like, I could do yeah. super. I could be a supervisor. I'm good with. I like working with people and motivating them and working with them to get to a goal. I just was not good at the direct service with us with the patients and the clients because it it just affected me too deeply. Yeah, I think Maddie would 100% relate to that. We've talked about mm-hmm. that a lot. And I I mean, I'm not going to speak like for her completely, mm-hmm. obviously. But yeah, we, we've talked a bunch of times, especially it's just it's so exhausting, first of all. And then also, I don't think therapists are paid enough, especially in those kinds of jobs for families yeah, so, specifically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying, and, and that's the thing with therapists. Most of the time, if you're really, as, as same with teachers it, yeah. and nurses, if you're passionate about it, you're going to do it regardless, but it wears yeah. on you so mm-hmm. much. The um, so th- I think, yeah. And she was, you know, she was getting hit a lot because they can't control their, yeah. uh, you know, functions Impulse. sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like, it was a lot. And I think that she would say this too. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll cut this out if I if she doesn't yeah. approve, but I totally yeah, think yeah, that yeah. she would yeah. agree. And like, because not many people think about it. And I think the more mm-hmm. we talk about it, the more we can kind of bring that awareness to it yeah. because it's Excellent. like, it's just not really talked about in the way that I think it needs to be. So, or at yeah. least it's not part of the general yeah. conversation. Obviously, it's gotten a lot better, but, but yeah, that makes so much sense. And then acting wise, like, I mean, even if you're not doing something crazy with the therapy, like, it, yeah, if it becomes, and anxiety, like this is so stressful job. I can't even perform the audition. Yeah. Then like, what mm-hmm. is the point? Because what is the point? It is, exactly. It is a job. It is work, but it's mm-hmm. also like s- supposed to be fun at the same yeah. time. <laughs> Most you not know? supposed to be fun. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, well, that yeah. is so great. Thank you for sharing that backstory. That's amazing. Yeah. Are you still working with, uh, like, did you leave that supervisor? No, I've, I've shipped into full-time acting now. Okay. I shifted into okay. full-time acting. So that's why oh I said gosh. I jumped back in after, because I was there with the company for five years and I'd given myself five years with the company. And then I would hmm. decide whether I would continue or make the switch back to, and, and, and I was still doing readings and I was still doing um, directing sure. for friends and what have you and coaching my friends. That's how I stayed tangentially involved with the business, but I wasn't directly going out there, out there myself with it until yeah i I really feel like if you leave um there's not really like a officially leaving it's more of like Mm -hmm. it's just not going to be full time anymore (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) so i just took that time i took that time for myself to really you know yeah really and you're you're a performer so you understand it thank you absolutely no i mean i i think so many times we push ourselves and we're like no i'm just gonna keep fighting keep going keep going yeah and it's just like no you can take the yeah. time. Acting will always be here. It it's really will be. Exactly. I mean, I feel like there's this scarcity mindset um, that is really hard to push against because mm-hmm. and like really resist that because it's just not yeah. true all of the time. Like sometimes it yeah. is sure, but like th- it will always be there for you. There will always be agents. There will always be things you can audition for, you know? So yeah. I think yeah. that when you need that mental space, like mm-hmm. it's hard though, because you're like, taught that everybody's gonna like forget about me i'm never gonna do this again (laughs) i know it was uh, absolutely and and i've been in this industry i was thinking about it because i was talking to my best friend about it it's been over 30 years that i've been considered a professional actor um if i look at it because i became a professional actor i got my sag card in 1993 okay okay wow so if i'm going from that date moving forward that's when I was considered a professional actor. But I did move yeah. to L.A. till 98, um, mm-hmm. which is a lot older, and, and for actors to come to L.A. Because they usually said, and a casting director told me this, a good friend of mine said that, look, for, for coming to L.A., you need to either be called by the industry or you're coming off a Tony <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, Tony Award nomination or don't bother coming. Well, mm. I didn't have any of those categories so when I came out anyway. But when that's you say usually called, the, Do you mean like they called you to come out to a show or do you mean like yeah, a calling, like a it, spiritual calling? No, no. They like basically they saw you in something okay. out in New York and they're like, we need we'd like you to come out here and audition for this or we need to see you for this. Yeah. So they've done that. That wasn't my situation. Well, which is, <laughs> yeah, which is so it seems like such a I don't know. To me, that seems like uh, maybe an outdated way to think about mm-hmm. it. Well, oh, it's totally um, and, different now. Yeah. Yeah. It's and totally I mean, now. I get it back in the day, like 
yeah. maybe that was the case. And even now, yeah. I think some people will say that to you, like, don't move out here yeah. until you have something. And I don't know if that that's just that I didn't do that either. I moved mm-hmm. to L.A. Um, like right out of college. And um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, now I'm in Nashville, but I lived in L.A. Yeah. for about almost five years okay. um but yeah i mean you have to be there to like m- network and meet people and yeah. if you hate la obviously like maybe you do your work somewhere else and then you mm-hmm. can come out when needed but but yeah so i mean it worked out <laughs> yeah i love la i've always loved to be in la so i, do too. I think a sp- if you're speaking of spiritual calling my spiritual calling was to be in la so it was mm-hmm. where I, I needed to be and yes and i was fortunate because my first job i moved in 98 um, and it, and I got an agent and it took me a year to get my first job. My first job was, um, Will and Grace. Oh, and that was my, my introduction. My first, uh, you know, camera on camera. I mean, I've done commercials in New York. I've done a lot of theater in New York, but when I got to LA, my first job was, was that was, um, Will Amazing. and Grace. Yeah. Which was wow. like, you know, and you're coming into the business. You don't know. You're still excited and was, it was very thrilling, but I s- <laughs> quickly realized that I need a lot more of those in order to really start to sustain myself in this business. Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, once you you pay agents and taxes and all that stuff, it's like... Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So the reality hit really quick. Really, really quick. Were you in... So you were in New York before LA, you said? Yeah, I was in New York before LA. Um, I did my undergrad at Rutgers. Okay. And then I moved to New York and started studying... Um, with a really terrific acting coach, Alan Savage is his name. I studied under the, I did took some courses at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York, and I took and I studied with some other. But the acting teacher that I said that I I learned the most from and really honed my skills was a man named Alan Savage, and mm. he had uh, and he had a small class, about eight to twelve people. That's the only amount he would allow in his class. But I understood why, because it was very intimate and we got into a lot of personal things in order to flesh out characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so he needed, he created a safe space for that everyone to, to be able to do the, to do that kind of work. And, and when I, I had to audition because I had to audition for him and it was kind of serendipitous because I met him in a gym and he was telling me that he used to, he had a, um, he had won an, an uh, Emmy for a movie he had shot. And out of in that movie, I saw and I happened to see the movie when I was a kid and it stopped me from doing drugs because it was about a kid who OD. And wow. I said to him, I said, and when he mentioned it, I said, is the movie called Not Me? And he's like, yeah, how do you know that? I was like, that movie stopped me from doing drugs. And he said, <gasps> he's like, wow, I've never had anyone share that experience that they've that movie had that kind of effect. on." I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, I had friends who were delving into and playing. I was like. I was focused. I was going to be, I was going to go to college and I was going to um, get a scholarship and, and go from there. And so he said, you know what? Um, I like you. If you ever need any help, you know, let me know. That's when he told me he was acting teacher, but he had no space for me. I had to wait Mm. a year to get into his class. Wow. A year. Oh my gosh. The acting, the wait. I'm dealing with that here in Nashville. Um, like the waiting list to get into acting classes is so wild because everybody's like, "You should be in a class," and I'm like, "I want to be in a class. I'm trying." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally uh, get it. Yeah, but um, and it was interesting because when I did, I had to do a monologue for him to get accepted into his class because he he said, "You know, I have really some really talented people, and I like to keep it small." Well, mm-hmm. I got into class. The people that was in the class that I went to audition were the likes of Hidden Battle, because he was on Broadway at the time. Hidden mm-hmm. Battle just passed away from, he was three-time Tony winner, um, dancer, actor, singer, did all three of them brilliantly. Kim Cottrell, she had just done Mannequin, <gasps> and so Whoa. she was in class with him, and she hadn't, oh she hadn't become Kim Cottrell yet. She was on her way. <gasps> so it was people, you know, Norm Lewis, it was just people like that in the class, and I'm like, I, I knew who they were, space-wise. Sure. But then, of course, they took off to do really great things. And I sat in class, I was like so nervous. But the way he ran the class was everyone got to say what they thought of your monologue. So I got the feedback and he said, and he's like, you know, I think I, you know, I think you're nervous and what have you. And I was like, yeah, of course. And then as I keep, and he pulled me aside, he said, go back, I'm gonna give you a note. And, and he gave me the note and he said, come back and do it. Now that I've gotten it all in my system. And it was like, I don't care. I'm just going to do it. I took the note and I did it. And everybody was much more responsive. I was like, great, what have you? And I got into his class. And then Amazing. I started studying with him. 
So isn't that the craziest thing about acting where it's like you care so much, but you have to pretend you don't care to or <laughs> actually not care. To, yeah, <laughs> to like, I know. To make it you work. Know? Oh, my to God. To make it work. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, that's it's amazing. though. So did you study? Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You oh, I was ask. Gonna ask, did you study um, what you call it um, acting in your undergraduate as well? Or was it more psychology? Um, uh, it was uh, psychology was my uh, 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 communication with psychology um, was uh, advertising was the main. Um, oh, OK. And I took I took acting classes and made it my minor. Um, oh, so I had got it. a okay. theater minor um, in, in it and I discovered acting. I, I think it was either my junior or sophomore year. So it was kind of late in the game when I decided. So the only thing I could do was I just wrapped up all my courses to make it my minor because I didn't start my freshman year. By the time I discovered mm-hmm. it, I said, oh, wow, I really want to do this. And by that time, and Bill Esper was the head of the department. And okay. his, um, his second in command was a woman named um, um, Flanagan. Um, and she's the one that uh, kind of gave me a little nudge in, in that direction. So when I got to New York, I was looking for acting, acting coaches because I realized that's really what I, I wanted to do. But my job was my day job was working at a health club. I was a manager at a health club when I got to New oh, York. Okay. I was like 22 years old. And, and at the time I was an athlete. I grew up playing soccer my whole life. And then I used to tumble. So I was a cheerleader for actors. Oh which was gosh. the performance side of me was coming out. And so yeah, moved that into acting. So that's, Tumbling that's is where so it's hard. Like, Good for you. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, it is. It is actually. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, and I always say with acting, I feel like, you know, you, if you go to school, that's amazing and wonderful because you have it on your resume, but I also feel mm-hmm. like acting can also be accomplished, um, like training wise, almost like a trade school kind of vibe where like, well, yeah. as long as you're taking those classes and taking them from people who you trust and can learn from, I think. Yeah, that's absolutely. You, yeah. That's still good. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's a, it's a profession. And I think the reason why so many people think they can do it is because your instrument is you. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of people have great personalities and they can do that and make money doing that because their personality is so infectious. People want to be around them and that's one thing. But if you're going to be an artist as an actor, it requires skill and it requires training so that you're able to make the adjustments when the director says, you know what? Um, I don't think that's what the character's feeling at this moment. I need you to really reconsider how you're going to attack that scene mm-hmm. and make it so that these are the elements I'm looking for. And you're able to take that and say, okay, yeah, so what is my backstory that I came up with that can fuel and make that shift happen? Mm-hmm. But if you don't have that training, then the director will tell you they want to change and you'll just give them the same thing over and over again oh, and it kills right. your you know, it just doesn't right. go in the direction. And then you become that person that eh, they're, you know, they're just a personality. You're not going to get much more from them than what you got. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, taking yeah. direction. So like technically, what was it have? Um, was it five years or something that you that you took off that you were at that job? Or was it a little bit more than that, that you kind of it was off? five years? It was five years, okay. actually. Five years. OK. And wow. and it was it was interesting because I said to myself, I'm going to think about it five years. But the universe always comes around. I'm very spiritual in that way. And I believe in, oh my God, in, same. in how things come together. There's a lot of serendipity in my life, how I moved to L.A., how I got my acting work. There's always some kind of synchronicity and serendipity to it. And mm-hmm. I, I um, when I a friend of mine booked a pilot and she said they're looking for the uncle and you'd be perfect for it because I'm, I'm, I'm Haitian um, born. So, okay. and, and I speak Creole and French and she's like, they're looking for somebody who do that. So why don't you, uh, um, you should audition. And I said, look, I've let all my platforms go. I don't even have updated information. So I'm going to have to pass on this one. So she took it upon herself and this was 2021. She took it upon herself, uh, and, and went and got my stuff. And she looked at my, all my resume. She's like, Oh my God, you've done a lot. And she's like, why aren't you? Why aren't you acting? You're so good. I've seen your reel and blah blah. And I was like, mm. well, I, I, I'm going to get back into it, but I'm working. You know, I'm working this job right now. I got to figure things. And she just went. She's like, I, she sent her, my information to her manager and her agent, and they both reached out to me and said, we'd like to meet with you. And I was like, sure. You know, they're coming to me. I'm just going to go with the flow. I signed with them, and that was in 2022. 
I signed with them. And uh, by that was in March, I signed with them. And mm-hmm. uh, I booked um, I booked a single drunk female that mm-hmm. August, I saw that okay that August I booked single drunk female. And then uh, I was getting a lot of callbacks and a lot of good feedback from the casting directors saying, hey, we like what he's doing. We just need to find the right things for him. So the positive response made me go, hmm, maybe it's time for me to get back into the game and really take it more seriously and go- make that the focus instead of trying to juggle yeah. two jobs. And yeah. once yeah. the uh, the Pax Lobby commercial came shortly after that, and I was like, okay, let me just jump in and make it all one direction. And Yay! That's what I, I loved yeah. it. I was like, "Oh yeah. my god, Councilman Hauser is teaching us about COVID." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, here we go." Holly, oh I have god, to tell you, you, I yeah. had no idea that Fox and Recreation had the response that it had. Oh, I had my no god. idea. Well, and it's gotten bigger with all of these streaming services as it's resurfacing, yeah. especially with The Office. I mean, I don't know if Parks has um, resurfaced as much as I would say The Office is, because The Office mm-hmm. has like. 800,000 like books, podcasts, like all these things. Um, and yeah, now that I've always been a Parks and Rec fan, like I think I don't even know when I started watching it, to be honest with you, but I've always been like I was watching it when it was on. I watched the finale, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the um, and tw- you might hear my cat, by the way. I didn't want to lock her out of the room, but <laughs> no, I, I love cats. So you're in good company. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyhow, so then I watched the 2020 thing um, and then Maddie and I were sending uh, voice memos back and forth to each other because she actually lives in Arizona. And mm. um, and then we were like, I wonder if we should just start a podcast because we like I think other people would be interested in talking about this stuff. And then we landed on Parks and Rec because we're both Parks and Rec fans. And I have to say the guest stars that I've talked to have mm-hmm. been or like crew or whoever have been mm-hmm. so kind and generous with their time. I mean, there's only like I can count on one finger who it might have been like, oh, they they don't want to talk about it anymore. It's fine. Um, but for the most part, I would say like 95 percent of people are just like, oh, my God, I loved that job. That was so fun. I'd love to talk yeah. about it again. And it really goes from the top down because I've heard Amy Poehler obviously is like just the best. And it just trickled down. And I think it trickles down into the audience, too. Yeah. Like the people who love Parks and Rec love the people who also love Parks and Rec. It's such a Correct, community. Yeah. So it's so wonderful. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to talk about no, it. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I was a friend of mine, actually, when I was working at the job, I didn't realize um, the, the impact that Parks was having outside of just mm-hmm. when it ran the, the years that it ran. And I knew that it was going to streaming services and I knew, and sometimes occasionally I'd get somebody when I was working as a therapist said, what are you, did you? And I was like, Oh, yeah, but but yeah, that was a, you know, I did that a while ago kind of thing, kind of brush it off so the focus could be on what we were doing therapeutically. And when I started working for this company, when I got there, they had all Googled me and I didn't know this (gasps) because I wasn't Googling anybody. So they all Googled me and I'm coming in clean and meeting my staff for the first time because I'm a new supervisor in there. And they're all like, um, one of the guys said to me, "Um, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, just wanted to let you know that I know that you're an actor. And I was like, okay, that's something I did do. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh-huh. And he's like, well, <laughs> we all Googled you and we know you did it. And I was like, wow. So everybody, my staff and everybody was talking about the fact that I'm an actor. And then I started to find out about the parks and recreation part because somebody said, you know, you're a meme. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I didn't even know what a meme was at the time. <laughs> so that's how <laughs> uninvolved I was. Meme. Tell me. I know with any of that. And then he said, have you, have you Googled your name? I was like, uh, yeah, but it's, you know, some of the stuff that comes up, I don't even have any connection to it. It's just people creating content. And he's like, no, Google your, your councilman Hauser name. I was like, no. He's like, try and Google that. And when I did, I saw all this conversation about Fox and Rec and councilman Hauser and how he support, he didn't support, um, Leslie Nope and he should have done. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What is, <laughs> and that's when I started, and I said, oh my, I didn't even know there was a podcast about Fox and Rec. Oh my gosh. There was so much the I didn't know. The fandom is wild. It's wild. There's a cop that, you know, I love Nick Offerman. Mm-hmm. I love that man. And he has a mug for him with his mustache. And, you know, yep. there's like people created stuff. His char- I love his character. He's my favorite character on the show. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Nick was yes, my favorite character on the show. You know, and of course, yeah. outside of, of Amy. Amy was, at, as, they, as they said, such a gracious, so 
incredibly talented. She make it, she made it look so easy and it mm-hmm. was not because she had so much dialogue to, to remember when we would finish our scene, she had to jump into the next scene and go through that whole thing. But what I really appreciated with her is that I'm not, um, part of the, the, uh, um, improv machine that she's from. So a lot of the people, the guest stars that would come in came from that background so they could roll with things. And, and I know that I was the straight man to her, Mm -hmm. her wackiness. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll stick to that because I'm not one that thinks really quick on my feet and do all these gymnastics with improv. And they would have something called a fun run after you do the dialogue. They would do a fun Mm -hmm. run just to just spin off and, 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 vibe with each other and amy would always lob me uh a, 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 a line to try to get me to vibe with them and in, in improv yeah. and i had like two words that's the only thing i could come up with because i could never <laughs> flow like they were flowing um, i mean there's a reason there's training for improv exactly there's, there's training for it i understood so that hard. yes and the yes and part of it you always want to sure. go yes and but my yes and was like i don't know what the else is coming up because they were so <laughs> <laughs> they were just so yeah. good at it. I mean, the oh my episode gosh. with well, Pat- mm-hmm. No, go ahead. The episode with? Patton Oswald. Oh, yeah. Patton oh, Oswald. my gosh. You know, filibuster? Yes. He was, I mean, he, that genius. The Star Wars thing. I, the Star and Wars the Marvel thing. Universe connection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have read many a blog slash fandom thing about how that was all him. And he... I don't know if he made it up in the moment or had, I think he had probably been thinking about this because I know he's a mm-hmm. huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. But like that was one of the behind the scenes things that I found as well, where he was, uh, they didn't really plan for him to talk that long, but they yeah. ended up filming all of it. Right. Because he yeah. just kept going and it was so interesting. And then yeah. I, I think, I don't know if it's true. I'm sure you can tell me, but um, it was like when, and that episode, particularly when Chris Pratt, Andy leans forward and I think somebody, oh, maybe I think it's Jam leans forward um, as well. And is and I don't think that was meant to happen from what I've read. They, they were just like so intrigued by it. And yeah, we were, yeah, we all were. We were supposed to be being worn down by the filibuster. You know, mm-hmm. just the cat. We're just like every as a time when the tires are coming down, people are sweating. People are just like, yeah. It's on and on. That was the intent and the idea behind it. But he was so fascinating that we kept going, oh, yeah, we're supposed to be wearing down. But we're like, what is happening? He is so engaging. But that wasn't yeah. what we're supposed to be. So we kept fighting the moment with wanting to hear him because he was just riffing and it was hysterical. And, oh and Amy and Amy was, jo- was, of course, chiming in because she was feeding him by trying to interrupt him. And he's like, no, no, no. And he kept going. And then she's like, and she would, and it was just on and on. It was really a fantastic, fantastic moment. We all stood up and applauded when he was done. Um, <gasps> that's we amazing. We all stood up and applauded. Yeah. We all stood up. Because and for the, the audience, yeah. that's called, I think that episode's called like Ted Party or something like this, where they are trying to get rid of Ted Party, get rid of, um, or Ted Party Day or whatever it is, where mm-hmm. they oh, throw really? you in the lake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, because that one is, um, yeah, they're trying to get rid of all the laws. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so I would love to hear, though, how you got your job on Parks and Rec in the first place. Like any sides that you remember going in for the casting office, anything well, like that? Yeah, I remember. Actually, I wasn't going to go to that audition. Because oh. I, <clears throat> yeah, I had, I was just leaving another audition. When I got the call from my agent and said, hey, they would like to see you for this project. Um, can you make it? And they knew I was leaving one other. I was like, you know what? I don't know because um, I looked at the sides. I quickly, I looked at the, the part and it's a councilman. I know I need to be in a suit. I didn't have a suit on coming from the other. I was going for something completely different. So I was like, by the time I turn around and go and it's, I won't, I won't make it in time. So I would have to decline on it. So she called the casting. She's like, look, can you, can you see him later? And they're like, she called me. I said, like, they'll see you later. So I was like, well, okay, I guess I got to do it. So I went and okay. got a suit and went over there. And when I got there, I was looking and the side, I had the side. So I worked on what I got. And when I got there, I saw, um, a lot of, um, some other guys in suits and ties. And it wasn't only African American. It was black. It was white. It was Asian. It was Latino in suits. And I figured, mm-hmm. oh, that's the role that they're reading for the same role I'm reading for. 
And I, but I looked at their sides, they had something different than what I had. Hmm. So I was like, hmm. And I said, is this the side for the councilman? I was like, yeah, this is, it said Councilman Hauser. And I was like, but I have this side. He's like, no, that's something else. Here's your side. Um, to the assistant said, and I was like, oh, dang now it. I got <laughs> You can <laughs> I got on like, the show if you need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I started to get nervous because I had no time. I was I already yeah. signed up and everything, and I was just at the last minute noticing that somebody had those guys had different sides than I had. They all had the councilman Howard side, so I immediately went and got the councilman. I was looking at it and I was like, okay, um, this is what uh, this is what I can do with it. I'm just gonna uh, play with that and see what happens. And then there's like, um, Yvonne, you're up, and I was like, okay, boom. So I walked in, and the casting director was like reading with me. And I took the opportunity to, because it's the scene where Pratt is on her, her back and, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, and they're, we're having the dialogue. So I was, yeah. I was looking completely, I made the choice to be in shock that this was happening and trying to have a conversation. And I kept diverting my eyes to like, what the fuck are you doing? My <laughs> underpants is like, uh, yeah, and so yeah. <laughs> eventually, and then next thing you know, I got the call and said, I got the job. I was like, Really? And and it was one of those things where you have to trust your instincts because I had no time to think. I can only yeah. go by instincts and being in the moment with her and just mm-hmm. reacting off what she what was happening with the camera. And yeah, use that. Totally. I made the camera something was like, whoa, what's going on here? And then um I so what the it, other sides were. How did you get the wrong sides? That sucks. You know, it really I mean, sucks. It it's, out, my but... agent sent it. Yeah, my agent sent it. And I think she just clicked on the wrong thing. Instead okay. of the, you know, because they send you the different ones, and but it worked. Yeah. It it turned out. It as as I say, I don't begrudge or have any kind of envy over other people getting roles because mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer that m- what's mine is mine. Yeah, what's and it's going to show will not up. Pass you. Yeah, yeah, will not pass you. So yeah. that one was meant for me, even though it seemed like there was stuff that was sabotaging it at the moment, but it yeah. was meant for me, and it just turned yeah. out to be. A blessing on on so many levels that I was not even anticipating just from taking that that call and making it happen when my agent yeah. pushed and said, you know, they'll see you. Right. Um, totally. That, yeah. Yeah. Because the office, that office liked me and they kept bringing me in for other things. It's just mm-hmm. I never booked anything. Right. Um, but right, they liked right. me and that kept bringing happens. me in. Yeah. Y- and it's so. nice when they bring you in all the time. I mean, it yeah. is yeah, it's one of those things that's like half annoying but half more grateful because you're like, "Wait, if you like me, then can I just please get this one?" <laughs> but again, mm-hmm. it's not I meant know. for that maybe all those things weren't meant for you, which it's is what you have to keep me. reminding yourself of. And the thing that sucks is when you think that something really is meant for you, like I I nailed it, but it just yes. again, it wasn't for you spiritually. It wasn't for me. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> And then you no. go, and then you happen to watch what it is you went up for, and you see it, and you're like, oh, okay, that's the choice they made in one direction. Right, okay, yes. I, get it. Like, oh, I know, you're like, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I get it. Okay, fine. Okay, I guess whatever. It's like, it's yeah. not, like I'm so happy for them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I totally get it. But speaking of that uh, scene, actually, um, I was watching through like all the other episodes that you're in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't really realize. I mean, I kind of knew this, but especially watching them all back to back. I uh, it, it's really interesting that you have this through line of just being like the yes, the straight man, but also like just the one that's even keeled and always, and they're always doing something crazy to you. Like they're bumping yeah. into you. They're fighting with a megaphone and you're just always the one that like, almost like a father figure, like the principal kind of, exactly. of like, are my kids fighting today? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's the writers at the, cause one, at one of the rap parties, the writer said, uh, I was talking to the writers and I, and I said, you know, I, I, when you first hired me, I didn't think that you guys like, he's like, oh my God, we love Councilman Hauser. And, and he's like, that's why we, you know, we, we love the fact that you're the, you're the, um, the anchor for mm-hmm. the fodder that happens because yeah. you're the, and, and there wasn't, they didn't use straight man, but basically, you know, the idea was that I'm the legit one in terms yes. of serious about the business and and keeping the moral code and the compass going in the one direction mm-hmm. meanwhile everybody else is spinning in different directions the wackiness is happening and when they see me it's kind of like a reset for them and then yes. they go off and do their things anyway so that was the intention it was a through line that they 
they were actually writing for throughout the episodes. I mean, truly, season. because you truly are the anchor. I mean, Dex Hart's having sex scandals. Jam is mm, just yes. trying to get money for his uh, dentistry. Leslie's like, obviously, she's in the right most of the time, but her moral compass is sometimes like, you know, on her. It's only Leslie Nope's kind of part. Yeah, of exactly. Moment, it's not all the time. Obviously, yeah. like she makes a lot of sacrifices um, to make the town better, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. But like she's the lead of the show so it's like you gotta have yeah. that other lead anchor but uh, that, that exactly. is so amazing um and did you know that you were coming back or was it just a one-time thing for the first audition it was a one-time thing for the first audition when i came wow. back it was a shock to me because that's why like i thought i was like yeah they'll never hire me again because they didn't like what i did <laughs> that was <laughs> that oh was where gosh, i went with what it an amazing- turn of you events know? it was and then the following year when they because i only did one episode the first year and then the second year i did i think two episodes and each year they saw the value that i bought in i guess and then they mm-hmm. started writing the writers were like oh we get it now he's the moral compass for what's going on and we can use him in this capacity because that's the energy he's bringing um mm-hmm. and so and i i think in, in initially they wanted the energy from my character to be more like Ham, the dentist, or John, John oh, Glazer. Jam. Yeah. 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 John, John Glazer. Glazer. Yeah. Jam, Jam. John Glazer's character, because he's the one that really combats with her, because the initial scene that I did with her, I was supposed to yell at her to get off his back. Yes. Oh, and that joke wasn't landing. That was the line. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my gosh. That was okay. the line. Yeah, so we, could, we could still create this tension. but. It the joke wasn't landing that way, mm-hmm. and so they changed it. Where I said, "I got to get going." You know, I don't have time yes. for this. Um, and this is why I said, "Oh my God, that's not working." The, what they wanted from me is not working because they wanted somebody to to be in odds with her and call uh-huh, her out uh-huh. every time, which I did, but I didn't do it the way Jam does it. Jam comes in, yes. they go, and that way, and Glazer is so perfect for that. So, so good. they kind of came up with a character that John had and then that took off because his character oh really gosh. made it and he is from that world of of improv so mm-hmm. he was able to really just spin with her and they came up with some great great scenes between the two of them and of course the writing supports everything that they were doing yeah but well I mean that it makes it I love hearing that's one of my favorite things why I ask like how the audition was if you remember what the sides were because <laughs> I love hearing like from script to set like what the yeah. differences might have been um, because exactly. I know that network shows will actually change stuff because like the audience isn't laughing. But I feel like with mm-hmm. the improv thing, they're just shaking things up just to see what's funniest. Like the, the mm-hmm. joke is king kind of thing, yeah. Um, yeah. which is so nice. And it's not anything about how the audience is perceiving it. It's just like, is it funny? Is it working? Yeah. You know what I mean, like, which I guess yeah. is like 5%. Yeah. How is it th- that the audience is working? But I, I actually love that so much because yes, you have that shocked face on your, like when you see her riding Andy or Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's so, I think that was a great decision though, because walking with her as she's on his back. I know. She's on back. <laughs> that was funny. That was the funny so moment. so much funnier than being yeah. like, no, get off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, oh what, yeah. my God. So that line was changed for me to say, you know, I got to get going. I can't continue this conversation. So it was interesting that, you know, and then when we both walking and that was her, you know, that was her. That wasn't part of the line. It's just when they when they said when they switched my line, Uh she came up with, you know, I'll walk with you. Oh As opposed God. to she was going because she was coming out of that direction and continue <gasps> instead of continue with me. She was turning around and said, I'll walk with you. And it was like and they kept it. That is amazing. That is so funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ugh, what an yeah, amazing like brain a, to have. Yeah. Those ideas. It was uh and, and I'll have to say, and I know you've heard this from the other actors and crew members, is that because we were the little engine that could, because mm-hmm. we never knew each season we were coming back, because NBC was always questionable whether they were gonna renew parks every season. So yeah. <clears throat> the joy and the appreciation for having been brought back, and it turned out to be seven seasons altogether, is is a testament to the fact that the cast and crew were so grateful and appreciative. And Amy being, you know, including the producers too, but Amy being uh, the 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 first on the call sheet, uh, set the tone of appreciation for being there, mm-hmm. and that yeah. that tr- trickled down to everybody that came on set to work. It was just a love fest to try to get the best product out that we could. 
in a fun yeah. and just jovial way of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds incredible. And I can't imagine what an amazing, um, you know, surprise and gratitude moment that was for you to have that one scene. And then there's 19 episodes that you're in. Like, I what? Know. And, That's yeah, so, and, and half of it is like there are it's, some of the scenes are only like three seconds, but God, are yeah. they worth it? They're so yeah. funny. <laughs> I, and, and, I got to tell you, Holly, I'm thinking to myself when I get the sides, I was like, oh, is that all you want me to do? OK, fine. I'll make the most of what that is and we'll make it happen. But, it, you know, as an actor, you always think, uh, uh, you know, maybe they, they don't think I can do more than what I'm doing. Uh, but also it's it fed what they were trying to do with the characters and making the scenes um uh funny in the way that they were because it just it yeah. just needed that punch and then move on punch and move on which is how Literally, they used and it. that one punch shows the character uh so much for who Leslie and Jam were fighting to get yes. the heart I guess yeah. um but they're like you if you if you that foil of you hadn't been in there as like I don't know. It would have just been maybe a little like we wouldn't as the audience maybe have related to it as much. But I feel like we mm -hmm. as the audience are you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, you know exactly. What I'm saying? Like we, we are like, <laughs> yeah, what are you guys doing? Hmm? Yeah, what? <laughs> exactly. And you're absolutely right. So I'm the audience seeing how they the wackiness of what yes. they're doing, especially you're supposed to be professionals and all the, you know, stuff that happens in their personal lives being filtered into the professional life, which happens. But it's just the way it's done in the way that the show chose to highlight it, mm -hmm. made it that kind of absurdist and funny um, where people could relate to all the characters. Yeah, totally. And that was a question that Maddie had in addition to, yeah, I was wondering the same thing of like, how would that have, or how was it to watch them go back and forth? Like, I mean, it must've been like a masterclass of comedy to just a sit master there. Class. I was hoping that they didn't have, like I always check to make sure I wasn't on camera because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> making facial expressions <laughs> yes exactly because they're they were they were really uh especially when they did the fun runs when they did the fun runs which is what they call the the scene where they just ad-libbed and improvised, and improvised. And they whatever. still stuck somewhat to the script they just mm -hmm. spun off it which i found yeah. to be really just genius in how they did that and amy was just so good at it and, and some of the cast members that came in especially some of the guest stars when they had seen, especially in the in the lobby, and they were able to go back and forth, they didn't keep some of them because they were off script. Mm -hmm. But it was just a masterclass in watching how it's done well. Mm -hmm. How you far know, in advance would they? Yeah, to totally consistent. Um, how far in advance would they tell you that they wanted you to come back on set? Was it like they gave you a week, or was it like we're shooting tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, no, that, it was at least a week because they would they would let my agent know they're writing my character in the next the next ep scene next okay. episode. So it's like, yeah, just okay, let gotcha. your client know that um, the next episode they're going to be in and we'll send them the information. Keep this week open. So I knew that I have okay, a gotcha. week to keep open and then they give me the dates and then I'd go in and shoot on those dates and I would rearrange my schedule. Thank God they did it that way because I didn't want to. Um, I, I hated canceling sessions, especially with therapy. You know, there's that mm -hmm. bond and you, you create with, with the client and I didn't want to. I did not want to shortchange them by 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 canceling sessions, which mm -hmm. I thank God never had to cancel a session. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's always it always worked out where I was able to rearrange the schedule and make it work. Yeah. And that's also I mean, depending on the client, that could really shake up how they go through their week if they have something that uh, a, an appointment that's canceled or whatever, you know, Absolutely. which it ha has to happen sometimes. I'm just saying yeah. depending on the client and how they can handle it. How you know they what I mean? can handle so. it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, you know, I was as I was watching, I wrote this down as I was watching some of your um, episodes. So uh, I didn't realize because in the first couple episodes, we know that you're a council member, um, mm -hmm. and you know, we know that you're kind of like in the middle, not extreme on either side. But we don't really see slash know that until like later on that you kind of I don't know they didn't say it on the nameplate, but that you're kind of like the leader. You're the one that's at the top of the the chairs yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. you have the gavel in a, in some yeah. of the meetings i'm the president like, oh of the gosh. board i did I'm not the president know of the that board. <laughs> you are yeah. the president of the board uh, yeah <laughs> <the> council members <laughs> my, and it, my, i just i was like that's so amazing to hear and see yeah and that's and, and that's how they created that moral compass because as a friend of the board i'm trying to wrangle wrangle 
the <laughs> you know the 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 craziness and yes. keep everybody focused on the subject at hand, which I always successfully did not do. <laughs> it always, <laughs> it always right. went in a different direction. I know. You I know. felt like a lot of times you were just watching it happen and just like, yeah, okay, just if it gets it like, it's like physical, maybe I'll step in. But other than that, we'll just watch yeah, it happen. It's like the dad at the dinner table <laughs> and the kids are going at it. And you're like, yes. I don't know how many times I could tell them, but they're, they're adults now. They should be able to handle yeah. themselves. Yeah. So. And I wanted to talk to you about your scene because right now we're um, we just passed when she's running. Leslie's running for the council, mm-hmm. but she's not on it yet. And I mm-hmm. want to talk about your scene with Rob Lowe, where you have to tell him, like, you might not have the job because Bobby Newport's going to uh, hire his own yeah. person. He's not happy. You've been uh, volunteering. That one was like a juicy, chunky scene. I was like, oh, yeah. my gosh, I did not know that because I've always yeah. wondered as I've been analyzing the show, we're like, is it OK that Rob Lowe's character is? volunteering for her campaign even though he's city manager like which technically I think it is but obviously that yeah. came back to get him so can, I just thought that was really cool do you have any memories of working with Rob Lowe and I do I, I do and I, I actually loved I love that scene a lot uh, because I learned a lot in terms of just my own personal managing of nerves mm-hmm. because um, working with Rob and and uh, of course I was nervous because I think he's fantastic in that part he was so fantastic and um and of course i've i've watched him when i was not an actor <laughs> you know i knew i've yeah. known of him when i wasn't even he's an been actor. in our so lives be, for the whole time yeah you know he grew up you know with with me in a sense and then mm-hmm. to be there and now i'm doing work with him it was and he was incredibly gracious very professional kind um and if <laughs> the first time I did the scene, it went and he's like, fine. The director came back and gave me a note and I made the change. And when he came back and gave me the note, I'm one of these actors, unfortunately for me, is that when I'm nervous, I pour down and sweat. Really? Yes. <laughs> it's like, I can't hide my nerves because it comes like pouring down. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> in between the next, the first take and the second take. I was like, I need tissues, please. And I was like, okay, how do I say that I need tissues so they know that I'm, I'm, I'm like sweating. I, could, I feel it. And I looked at it in the back of the scene. There's a drop of sweat in the back of my neck <laughs> <gasps> when they cut and they look and they're giving his POV. And I'm talking to him. I was like, yeah, I could see because I was just like padding down before the scene without trying to sure. mess up with uh, the little light makeup they had on me. So I tried oh to patch well, I didn't see it. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll have <laughs> like, to go back. That's a nice little Easter egg behind the scenes moment, though, that I'll have to look at yeah. next time. But I didn't see the it. Nerves so was, <laughs> the nerves were running through me left and right. But that's why I said it's it's an important moment for me because it's, more, it's, it's one of those where I I was able to make the switch. Because, you know, the negative self-talk mm-hmm. could kick in mm-hmm. when you get a note. Because you think, oh, I just, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then you get a note. And I was like, oh, okay, let me make that adjustment. And it worked out <clears throat> because he wanted me to, uh, um, like, cut him off. But like, not cut him off, but really come right after. And he's like, um, and Councilman, uh, when he says the line that um, Ron Swanson, who told him something like that, he's like, Ron Swanson, and he jumps in. And he's like, mm-hmm. hey, I want you to really stop him and say, look, and then go from there. And I forgot what I'd mm-hmm. done before which is what I did. I said, like, pin it. And then we go and we have that. And he said, bring him around and make sure that there's nobody listening to your private conversation. And I was like, okay. got it. So, so that was the movement that was added to make that scene yeah. work from what I did initially. They made that adjustment. He's like, bring them around so we can cap, the camera's going to be set up there so we can capture that interaction away from so that people can walk behind you because you're in a hallway sure. situation. So I was like, okay, I got it. If that's what they, so that's what we did. But I remember getting that note and trying to make that adjustment really quick in my head because mm-hmm. I'm running the lines in my head and I'm just like making sure I stay on top of what I want to say. And, and and so that's where the nerves kind of like, all right, um, just got a note to make all these changes. And now I got to process it and put it in and still hit my lines. And, and I was like, OK. I know. Well, especially as a guest star, uh, when you're coming in for like a, you know, a, a day yeah. or whatever, you're like, I don't want to fuck up the whole thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and but, I no, have to did wrap a great job. Oh, thank you. And I have to wrap up to where they are because sure. I'm coming in and they've been right. in their groove 
and I've got to ramp up to the get to where they are in the groove that they're in. And that's the part is doing guest star roles and, and, and coming in as co-stars or guest stars is that, especially if you're working with the, one of the lead actors, they have yeah. their character set and they know their journey. They're comfortable in that, their skin. You're coming in. You have to come in and be as comfortable and hit the, and, and be at the level in terms of their groove and hit that stride with them. And mm-hmm. that's always challenging when you're coming in. Yeah, you know, especially because you're like the new kid at school. You're just like, yeah. I know I belong here, but also this is creepy and weird sometimes. Yeah. But it's also, <laughs> it, it, it is interesting, though, because I think that's something that, you know, you always forget uh, or I always forget. It's just like and it takes practice, obviously, to just have it be a sense of play more than mm-hmm. anything, because when someone and when a director gives you a note, unless they really are, you know, a cruel yeah. person most of the time that direction is just like let's just play with it and see what happens from and that see what and happens. it's nothing personal or whatever yeah um but yeah so just kind of reminding yourself of that but that was like you said and like we were talking about it's it's a chunky scene i think mm-hmm. it's juicy so um yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad that they gave you that i uh, me too i was very happy that they gave me that it gave me a sense of of um i felt and not not that's I, I felt at the time that they did. It wasn't because a lot of times in my head, I was thinking, I don't think they think I can act and do more mm. than just a few. That's where my mind was going. But yeah. after talking to the writers, I realized that they was like, no, 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 that the, we are intentionally making them the way it is. Yes. Um, and when I when I got that scene, I was like, oh, OK, so it's not it's that they want right. to have just enough to be the anchor, because like you said, I'm the audience. Um, yeah. I'm the compass for the audience in terms of how they see the show. And yeah. so and it's it truly made that sense. Thing of, yeah, totally. And it's so it's that thing of like you are a part of the whole. Without you, yeah. it wouldn't be a whole picture. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. that totally so makes sense. That's where the self doubt, you know, the self doubt and the negative talk as actors, you're like, well, I could do more. I they probably don't think I can do more. That's why I'm not getting more. <laughs> and you <know? laughs> And I had to I shut know. it down because yes. it's very easy to go down that rabbit hole when you're trying to prove yourself and and make a mark. But uh-huh. I, I just say, I'm just very grateful that it found it's the audience that it found and that mm-hmm. people are still enjoying and getting us, especially with all the political stuff that's happening. And you get a sense of what's happening politically mm-hmm. through the absurdity. And the writers were so good to bring in certain political things that were happening. Like when, when, when uh, uh, New York passed the, the uh, tax, for drinking the soda tax. Yes. And they came up with soda tax. They brought that in. They brought that so in. Good. It's hilarious because New York, Bloomberg, at the time, Bloomberg was the mayor and he put yep. a soda tax to the sugar and all that. And she's with this big old soda and she's slurping it and talking. Yes. It's hilarious. Oh my God. Brilliant scene. Yeah. They were really good at incorporating yeah. real life into the show, which was yeah, in a comedic were... way, which is ugh, so brilliant. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was very um, yeah, But I do have a question really about. Good. There's sure. this one scene. Um, there's this one scene. I don't know if you remember, but like you go out to the uh, the car. I was about to say car park. What am I British? The, the parking lot. The, <laughs> the parking lot with Jam's car, uh, the yellow car, and it's yes. so quick and fast. And I just wonder if you have any memories of that. Uh, what what that day was like? Yeah, that day that was a two day shoot actually. Um, and that was one. It it that day was a a fun day. And I'll say this because. We shot it on a Monday, and the SAG Awards were on that Sunday. Oh! Yeah, the SAG Awards that Sunday. So Amy and Tina Fey were up for the same role, because she was doing 30 Rock. Uh Uh-huh. And they both were up for Best Actress in a Comedy Series. Tina Fey won. Yeah, Tina Fey won. So when we were, because, you know, we were all sitting at the board when we go outside that that day. It's the board meeting, and then we go outside, and then he shows us the car, and we come back. Right. And we were all sitting while they were setting up the cameras and get everything together. She, she was joking around. She's like, you know, who does a girl have to to get a, a you know an Emmy, a SAG award? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're all laughing and, and having a, a good time about it. And but what's, what was what she said afterwards? She's like, don't. I am so grateful that I get to come here on Monday because. The majority of the people that I was there with yesterday, which was the SAG Awards, do not have a, a, a job. Mm. They're still auditioning for jobs, even though they were there for the awards and what have you. They were not working, mm. and that's really 
something I think a lot of people uh, that you know d- d- don't understand the Hollywood in terms of they they think the glitz and glamour of actors is that it's not always consistent. To get a series regular role is really a needle in a haystack and, mm-hmm. and lightning in a bottle when that ha- when that opportunity happened. And for it to run consecutive years is even more phenomenal. So it's kind of um, a blessing, especially, and she was recognizing what a blessing was for her to have a series that is still airing and that people want to watch while the contempt- her contemporaries at the time were not in a show. And Teen and and Thirty Rock had just wrapped, mm, so okay. you know Tina Fey won that year, but they weren't coming back the next season either. Right, 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 right. So those are wow. Yeah. That's a really yeah. nice thing to hear, and I yeah. mean, for actors and non actors alike, honestly, because yeah. that's just yeah. That's the reality of it all is that yeah. the award seasons. It's like it's a really nice thing. It's really wonderful, but you know, mm-hmm. it's also the. The job is the award in some ways. Obviously, the paycheck is really what's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> you you have to get paid helps. for this hard the work. The paycheck's up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Paycheck's but, up a lot. Um, that's so cool. I love that. Yeah, because it is it is such a such a small little bit that I was like, what? Mm-hmm. They just put this in. And I love her line afterwards of like, why did we come out here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everybody, yeah. even the stenographer comes out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's, <laughs> and that's the part of it, too, that, that I loved about the writing is that even her character, when she's going for something, she does not know. She's so intent on getting what she needs that she doesn't mm-hmm. realize the absurdity of things she would do to get there. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, she did have the intelligence, the moral compass to understand there are certain things that's just like wrong. And yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll just say that one of my favorite episodes is, uh, I can't, it's when the bookstore, and I can't think of the title of the show, but yeah, the bookstore yeah, yeah. that turned into a porn Bail shop. Out. Yeah. The, that had me, that her reaction going, she's like, I don't recognize these books. <laughs> 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 and the yes. movies because it became a video store and she's like i don't yes. recognize these these videos Look. and and sh- she's naming them and you're cracking up because she's not getting it <laughs> that it's yeah and you see all the savory uh, the characters that are a little on the sketchy side in there oh my god i laughed so hard that episode oh my gosh me up. i and know and that one's up. a hard one because nick offerman's character is like the government shouldn't bail things out which like you do they did such a good job, I think, of really helping you see both sides of mm-hmm. it almost. Yeah. Um, and I think Veep did a really good job of that too. I'm always reminded because Veep never really writes for what like you think that they might be, but Veep really just writes um nonpartisan, I think. Mm-hmm. But like both yeah. sides are like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the other side is like, yeah. And you're like, yeah. you know, you're agreeing on the same thing. <laughs> I know you're agreeing on the same thing. Exactly. And you're or right. Whatever. They do they did a great job doing that. You're absolutely right. And yeah. and Nick's off- Nick Hoffman's character, uh, you know, he's got a, a a a huge following because he they don't say it, but he comes across more like a Republican. Oh, absolutely. They say you he's know? a libertarian. Yeah. You know, libertarian. But you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the libertarians are like, yeah, that means that's code for <laughs> you know right. our party yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and he does it so because it's so not who he is, and it's yeah. and he does it so well. That's why I love this character because he was just very straightforward and. Um, and of course, when his um, Amy um, and Megan Mullally, who played his wife on the show, oh, so good. She was when she was on. It was just a whole other hilarity to happen. Oh my gosh! Yeah, totally. Yeah. We actually talked about that in the last episode because actually, went in that episode where you have with uh, your scene with Rob Lowe, Chris goes to uh, tell Ron that you know I might have offered you a job that I can't actually give you, um, and Ron says, you know, I want to cut the post office, I want to cut traffic lights, I want to cut eighty five percent of the departments, and it's one of those <laughs> things where it's a good reminder of how ex- how you should write it extreme uh, on the extreme yeah. side so that you know that it's a joke because like yeah. it's a a reminder of like if Ron was a person in, like it's funny in a show but in a real life yeah. you're like if it was real life you'd be like you- <laughs> <laughs> what no how dangerous I know. I know they they made sure they pushed it far enough for you to realize it's absurd yes. exactly. what he's coming with that's is really exactly. absurd but that's his right. moral compass and that's what he would do if he had the power yeah you know? and there's another episode that um 
I was watching that you were in where it's one of those ones where you're just I'm sure you read it and you're like, OK, is that all you want me to do? Because there's one where she Leslie's meeting with Anne and then she sees Ben running down the hall and she just yes. runs and bumps into you. And all she's like, you don't even say anything. You're just like, I know. Uh, I even what? you. you know, <laughs> I remember thinking because I read the page and I kept looking and I went all the way. I read the whole thing and I'm thinking, so this is really all they want me to do is to come <laughs> through <laughs> because I thought I came back later and said something more and what have you. And I was like, okay. And and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that is why I was thinking they must don't think I actually know how to talk and walk and <laughs> chew gum and <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was one of those moments that made me think uh, they really they're just using me because they they don't want to give me they just don't think I can act so they're not going to give me more than what they think I can do and that's where my mind that's what I'm saying the negative talk was coming in uh-huh. as an actor but uh, but they they knew what they were doing and they had reasons for doing what they were doing so. well and like I don't know I mean obviously I I totally understand what you're saying so I hope that you see in hindsight that that's first of all I know you know now that that's not what they were doing but secondly it's like they. I think, well, Hollywood in general, kind of, but especially them, I don't think they they only bring back people they like is what yeah. I have found. So yeah. they are not going to like even think about bring. It's almost even more exciting that they just wanted you to be on set because yeah. that's just a random ass thing. And they yeah. trusted you so much to just like stand there and be that foil, which you totally were, because all you did was a facial expression and it slays. It's just like. Yeah. <laughs> Councilman Hauser, nice to see you as always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my but your God. Face, the though, back- you're just like, oh my God, this yeah. again? Because by that point, I think they really did. I'm, I mean, the first episode, I'm sure that yeah. that might have been just a one off. But by that episode, they had really created this persona for you of yeah. like, you're just the one that's knocked into all the time. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the one that points out her foibles. When she's yes. uh, acting unbecoming of a person that belongs in the office, yeah, unbecoming office member. Uh, yes. The one one other episode I really loved also is the bathroom where she comes into the bathroom <laughs> when I'm in there with Ron. <laughs> I wrote that <laughs> down did. too. Oh my god, that episode cracked me up so hard uh, because came, and what she came up to say at the end, I I was like, really. <laughs> I know. So hilarious. she goes in for the audience just to refresh everybody's memory. Okay, so this was the episode with the um, gazebo um, on yes. the Freedom's property or whatever, yeah, and she's yeah. following Ron into the bathroom, and you're in there too. And then yeah. she's like, "Not that I saw anything. I didn't see anything." And then at the end, mm-hmm. at the, I, I wrote this down specifically because at the end she says, "You know, I saw your penis," but they did not. They did not cut back to you. And I was like, I wanted to see his reaction. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same like, time, maybe it's good because you were laughing. I don't know. No, I, no, no. Because <laughs> they wanted to be, I, they wanted it to just land and go. To just because end. if they cut yeah, back to totally... me, then it would have been, um, okay, because the joke is really, it's the button of the joke. You're so drunk. And I wasn't the button. She was the button. Yes. And that's, a, that's you know, because all those things I, I learned on set. Is you if you want to put a joke in, you button it. Um, to cut back to me is a continuing the joke, and I'm not the button. Right, right, that right. That right. line, penis is the button, because that's what you remember. Yes, absolutely. Um, is, and is that? Total, it's like quintessential. I say the office and the and parks are the two. I think that really well, the office really like kind of created that mockumentary. But mm-hmm. they that editing, I think, is one of the most um, like innovative editing processes. At least I'm sure people were doing it before, but like the mm-hmm. now that it's mainstream cutting so fast because that yeah. is and like sometimes there were scenes or jokes that like they'd cut like almost two seconds too soon but, and that mm-hmm. makes it even funnier like when yeah. there's one when pratt throws up or something and they cut it immediately you don't watch him throw up the rest of the time it's just like yeah the, yeah. the initial act of throwing it's, it's, it's the like because they don't want to gross you they want they let you because they, you know you learn that the imagination sometimes is a lot funnier than the mm-hmm. actual visual of what you're showing and I think yes. they captured that because it's the same. It's the same producers for both the office and 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 right. um and, and creators. So they understood that um that way of of getting the joke across without showing show and tell. Of yeah, it. totally. 
Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, yeah. But I was going to ask you too. So, uh, though I was looking up some of the directors that you had worked with over all nineteen episodes, and Greg Daniels was one of the directors. I think for that first episode, um, yeah, yeah. When Leslie's riding on Andy's back, and I was just wondering if he or if you remember anything about that, or if he talked to you about. Well, if that's he why was, I, he I, because the he's the one that changed the joke. <laughs> so. Oh. And I and I was like, and I knew he was one of the creators, so I was like, yeah, they hate me. No, <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> that was the oh beginning of it. Of course, I should have put that together. Of course, yeah, they okay. hate me. They're never bringing me back. He's one of the creators, and he's changing the joke because it's not working. Okay, oh I'm done. Oh my god, that is so, <laughs> so crazy. Well, and Dan yeah. Gore, who created Brooklyn Nine Nine, who's like a huge part of Parks, was the one who directed mm-hmm. that one. So yeah. I mean, well, and that was like early Parks, so it wasn't yeah. really that you know exactly. known yet. No. So that's amazing though that you got to work with them because I mean they weren't as big. I feel. I mean, obviously Greg no. Daniels was because the Office. Yeah, yeah, like, Greg Daniels, but they were all coming together and creating this new TV style because it mm-hmm. was. Um, a uh, handheld camera, which was happening back with um, with uh, My Name is Earl, was one mm-hmm. of the first few sitcoms that was using the handheld cameras mm-hmm. and very out there, you know. And so Parks took a, took off on that. And if you notice, they used to talk a lot the first season. They talked a mm-hmm. lot to camera. That kind of changed as the season went on. They didn't yeah. do that as much, you know, yeah. have the interviews that they kept having. Right. They didn't they do have- that as much as the season went on. Yeah, I agree with that because yeah. they have some they'll throw them in every now and again. But yeah, you're yeah, right. It's I'm not good. it's not as like prominent, I don't think, as the uh, as the office, which yeah. is not I'm not mad about it. You don't really yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. miss it that much. It is a different exactly. vibe. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, because then so I wrote in I, I had in my notes that in season five and six, I mean, you were in like six episodes each, which was so crazy. Uh, yeah. That's when I think they, because she got on the board and that's when they really started writing for us as a group. And Ham and, and Ham, uh, um, Jam's character was mm-hmm. becoming more, and Dex Hart's character was becoming more uh, involved as well in terms yeah. of the writing. They were writing for, for them as much as well. Right. <clears throat> you know, I have um, to Kevin. ask about the filibuster episode, though, where she's mm-hmm. in her roller skates um, and she's trying, like, she has her overalls on and it's, like, really sweaty and Jam is making the margaritas and all that stuff, like, because I don't think... Oh, at the end, at the end, you have like a moment when you say, you know, this meeting has been adjourned, like Mm -hmm. we're good. But you kind of like say it with a smile, leaning towards over to Jam, like, ha, she won. And I just wonder Mm -hmm. if you did that on purpose or if you were told to do that or if you remember. No, actually, it was it was it was on purpose. And it was to because. My character did not like Jam, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like I, I. I'm there to kind of create the peace, but I side more with what Leslie Nope's character is doing than I do with Jam. Because Jam is, I understood that Leslie Nope was for the good of the people. Jam right. was for Jam's business. Mm-hmm. So everything he was doing was for his business and to promote his dentistry, because that's what he, he was. So yes. a lot of his choices were self, um, self-involved and yeah. hers was more altruistic yeah so because i'm there to try to make sure things are running smoothly for the community mm-hmm. i would tend side with her more so that was my little nod to be like yeah um you know that she got you on that one yeah you yeah know? oh so, my gosh i can't yeah. imagine what it would have been like to be in the audience though or be like on set that day because i mean all the crazy things that had happened you know with the margarita and the bong and yeah, <laughs> or yeah. gong yeah. rather not bong gong <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is so crazy. They kept coming up with stuff, and I'm thinking, okay, they really are taking this to another, a whole other place. But it works, you know, it worked. Yeah, totally. There's this one episode. I feel like I wrote it down. Um, where it was a continuity error. Um, where was it? Because there mm, was like a continuity were, error. I know. What I, I love catching those. It's so like Me random, too. but. Shoot, I can't remember which episode it was, but basically um, they were I think it might have been when Aubrey Plaza was doing the animal control situation, maybe Mm. um, absorbing Mm -hmm. that into parks. They show the city council and you're not there. And I was like, oh, they must just not have called him that day. Like, I don't know. Um, And then the next scene you're there. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) So I guess they just I, I went to the bathroom. 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> You're like, um, you guys can keep shooting all this. I'll be yeah, back. <laughs> I, I, have, I have to look at that. I have to look at that. That's a good catch. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to head count. Da, 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 da. Let's see. I, I know catch. I wrote it down, uh, but I just can't remember. Facial expression. Okay. Oh, oh, it was the filibuster episode, actually. Okay. Mm. Yeah, where Leslie's wearing her roller skates. Um, yeah, one second you're in the chair. It was the filibuster one. It was at the beginning when she when Ben and her and uh Rob Lowe's character Chris are coming in to be like, Hey, I thought we tabled this. Um, mm-hmm. you weren't there. And then when we turn her back around, you you are there. So yeah. Oh, okay. um, I think I'll that was in Season six yeah. or something, but it's literally called filibuster. So yeah, check it out. Filibusters, yeah. <laughs> I'll, look at, I'll look at that one. That's a good point. I think I, I remember see. catching that that and didn't. Yeah, I think I remember. Um, I think intentionally. I have to look at it again because I think intentionally they were the the boards the board members have not come in yet. They were coming in, and then mm. we came in later. That was the intention. I, uh, if I remember, is that uh, they were trying to have it on the side without yeah. the members being there. Yeah. And since it wasn't tabled, then the members had to be there to Ooh, address it. That makes a lot of sense. I could totally see Jam trying to sneak behind your back. Yeah. And that was the, okay. the, the idea was to try to sneak it in. And then they were like, no, we're not sneaking it in. We're putting it together. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Could that make, that's yeah. so much better to, in my head <laughs> fantasy yeah. because I was like, no, Hauser would not pull this back together without Leslie knowing. So that is a yeah. great call. They called you or yeah. somebody told you and was like, get over here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. That makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. Um, and I was going to ask, do you remember? Um, well, two people. First um, of all, did you ever have any interaction with Aubrey Plaza? That must have been fun to like see her do the deadpan working with Leslie. Oh, my God. Yeah. I never, you know, I never had any scenes with Aubrey, but uh mm-hmm. i've watched her work and right i gotta tell you she's i've never i didn't know of her before until this show and yeah. her timing and her the way she was able to navigate that character and build it as the season went on i thought she was fantastic and i and i i always wished i did have an opportunity to work with her but it never mm-hmm. happened because our our circles never came across from where she worked and where i worked we just never had that that interaction. But she Yeah, and- I don't think you guys spoke to each other, but I feel like you were in this you were in the council room when she decides to put animal control um with the parks um department yeah. or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you didn't have any But we did we rooms. never had a scene where I'm actually talking to her. Exactly. And, and right. Um and, and but that's awesome you got person, to work. The other person her, I like wanted watching. to work with, I never really had a direct scene with Nick Offerman either. Mm, and I always wanted a direct scene with him. I always wanted to direct scene with him, with Nick yeah. Offerman. That that didn't happen, but we would see each other, you know, in between takes and what have you. Yeah, and totally. So, and yeah, and I and I knew his 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 wife from. Uh, she remembered me actually, which was kind of mind blowing that she remembered me from doing Will and Grace what? with her back in the day. <gasps> That's My so first nice. Job. Yeah, which is which is really nice. So I had gone to yeah. see him. They they did a play together, and I'd gone to see to see them in the play and uh and waited for him afterwards to say how wonderful you know uh, congratulations and all that and she was like yeah i know who you are and we were talking i was like wow you remember that which is really because i you know which is really kind that which is really i mean kind. i would say that's hard for even like a really nice person to remember because there's so many people that come in and out of sets and stuff so that's so mm-hmm. kind and nice to hear that. yeah it really is it really really is so yeah and i know I, that I, yeah. um the one part with Nick Offerman I remember that you had was when I think it was during the bailout scene, like the one mm-hmm. with the movie dome. Um, and again, you didn't talk directly to him. You were just yeah. there. And then the, the there. grizzle one. Um, yes. Exactly. So that must have been fun, too, to because that's, that's when it. Jam is like pretending to be Ron to date Megan Mullally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I At one point, I thought they were going to make me and R- Retta's character. Um, <gasps> and I because. There was a scene, there was one episode where she mentions um, my character's name as a potential date or something like that. Oh, and I my! thought, yeah, there's a scene where she says something. So it was a, it was one of those, I was like, I wonder if they're even going to go in that. But they, they, they completely scratch it. But she did. That's when I thought, hmm, they mentioned my, and that was earlier on, they mentioned my name. So I was like, well, maybe they might consider to bring me back. Because at that time, I didn't know what was happening with the character. Mm-hmm. But she, oh she had made a comment about it. 
That would have been such a fun side story because I I keep saying, I I mean, they get better as it goes on, but they are underutilizing Retta so much in the first couple seasons because she wasn't a main character. But still, even as a guest star or like, um, you know, a day player, I feel like they should have given her more because I'm just like, oh my God. So I would have loved to see that uh, little side yeah. character because she's always dating men so you could have definitely yeah, yeah. been a contender <laughs> exactly i know and it was one of those things I was like, that would have been an interesting um interesting uh, uh side uh, uh journey with those characters um that, yeah. would have, that would have loved to have seen but um yeah and she's wonderful and they did they found what they found the usage of her later on and they started using her a lot definitely. more as the season well yeah, i know this <clears throat> yeah um, yeah. And then I was going to ask, too, if you remember um, the wedding day for Ben and Leslie, because that's where Jam is shouting into the megaphone and is yes. like, nope, sucks, whatever. And then you read again, one of those scenes when you just yeah. randomly come up and are like, walk by and there they are acting. Jam, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you Do guys you doing? That was was that on location? Uh, that was on location. Yeah, that wasn't at the that was on location. We had uh, we actually they had made it was a tent. Mm-hmm, and we had mm-hmm. done it outside in in a in um open area where they built a tent in the set, and it wasn't too far okay. from the studio where we actually shot the show. Um, yeah. And we, but they found a field where they could pull up the tent, and then we went there and did it there. Yeah, it's so cool. I can't believe you got to be yeah. at the wedding. Basically, I know. I was like, okay, this is this because I, I didn't know. You know, I never know when they're going to call me and what they're going to call me uh-huh. for. Obviously. Uh, but when I look back at the show, when I saw you know, the 19 episodes, I was thinking, wow, they used, they used me. Cause I wasn't counting really. It's mm-hmm. just when I saw it finally, I was like, wow, okay. I didn't realize I'd done 19 episodes, but I yeah, did it adds up. you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it adds up. Exactly. Were you so. in the crowd of the wedding too, or was it just like that scene and then you got to leave or, cause I don't know if they really panned over to you apart from yeah, that one. It was that scene. I think I was there for the whole day for the whole okay. day. For the whole shoot um but that was that scene they wanted me for and i don't know if they had me because i was part of the crowd in at oh, some okay. point but i just wasn't prominent in it right 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 oh my gosh yeah. i love that um leslie's wedding dress is like one of the best wardrobe creations ever like with the <laughs> clippings and all that stuff that's so I know. good i oh know and i love when she went to washington and met with um with president yes now president biden yes that is, uh, he was good. He was really he good was with her. Really good. <laughs> he oh was really my god! Good. And the way they wrote her and the way Amy plays it, I could tell that she I was know. playing so much with it. Of like, you know, leaning in to kiss him. I and- know. <laughs> <laughs> that was so like- hilarious to me. I was like, she is so fantastic, and you know, just uh, the nerves and wanting. And Ben is right there. He's like, look. <laughs> yeah. And Ben does his classic Hilarious. like look to camera when she's like, "Oh, I couldn't possibly fill Hillary Clinton's um seat. Then- <laughs> or, or seat. Why would I, I- okay, I'll do it." <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden was really good. I feel like he, was he got really good. He did the, I you thought know, he was um, really good. Yeah, very apprehensive and kind of like, yeah. oh, okay, but still that <laughs> vibe of like uh, I guess I'll yeah. just laugh along with this. <laughs> I know. I can't believe they got it's him. Funny. That is amazing. Yeah, I, I, that just shows. I was like, this show has come really far. If you're going to get yes. Vice President Biden to be on on the show, it was well. Yeah, and later in later seasons too, when um uh John McCain, I believe, comes on, and this one mm-hmm. other gal, Kelsey. No, shoot, I forgot. It was another senator. A couple senators have come. Mal- yeah, Madeline Albright. Like what? Yes, I know. And- they were getting some really top notch. Um, political figures in, on the show. Yeah, because and in because, the first couple because seasons, they loved they the show. Been... They watched it as well and loved it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really the how indicative or, or yeah. that's indicative of how wonderful the show was. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I felt about like in the beginning, they were mentioning all of these people like Leslie mm-hmm. obviously knew who all these people were and everything. But then as we get further on, those people are actually coming on. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what a wonderful like trajectory for them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I was going to ask you about the filibuster episode when it's supposed to be really hot because Jam takes off the thermostat. Was it actually hot in there or were you guys like getting water put on you because it was like, and no, <clears throat> no, they actually, it wasn't, it wasn't hot, hot. They keep the set fairly relatively cool. 
for everybody yeah, because of the makeup and what have you. Lights. So we were more or less playing at it and spritzing a little bit and okay. having the things go. They they we added to it. <clears throat> okay, okay. It wasn't wasn't that hot because they have for the purpose of the room and of course everyone who's wearing makeup and what have you, that would have been too much. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what I figured, but I was like, you know, you never know what these You never know. I know. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> you never know. Oh my gosh. And then in one of the episodes or the last episode I think that no. It was the second to last episode that you were in. You get to introduce the sign to Pawnee, like with the slogan. Yes. That was yes. so cool. I thought that was really, really cool as well. I was like, and and thank you for letting me, because I went looking for it and I couldn't find it. And I thought it was the last episode, but it was a second to last episode um, mm-hmm. that I went looking for it because it, there was one that I was like, okay, because it was the last season. I knew that was the last season. Um, and I was wondering if they were going to use um, my character in any of the, that season and to have councilman Hauser is the one that presented the the sign i thought that was really a great um a great wrap up for my character yeah me too and i think it's also so funny again brilliant writing um of leslie you know not trying to be too involved in micromanagey but then they end up putting the so- the sign the wrong way and even councilman yeah. hauser is like doesn't know or doesn't care or missed it or whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the guys, are, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. It is that that is the writing was really pretty brilliant. They knew, they yeah, knew what so they were good. doing. They knew what they well, were the doing. Well, the sign sure. too said, yeah, they totally knew what they were doing. Um, but the slogan says, "When you're here, then you're home," and that was kind of the joke of like they used "van" instead of "then." Um, but uh, I was like, why don't you just say "When you're here, you're home"? Why do you have to even put mm-hmm. "then" in there? Then, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, total Pawnee moment. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and you, re- if you remember the uh-huh. the the, they had a thing with signs because, um, yeah, sometimes they they uh would use uh I remember it was it the Sebastian the Sebastian mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. you know so they 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 have a history of using you know making things a little bit um just slightly off because oh it's yeah like yeah you know? totally that makes total sense. Do you remember yeah. where that was at all? Uh, I remember it, it was outside of LA. It was more towards the valley, like Northridge area. Okay. And we we typically set a uh, shot in the um, uh, what you call it? Um, it's a. Are you talking about like I, CBS I, Radford? Yeah, say Radford. Yeah, Radford Studios. Uh-huh. So so and Radford Studios is right in Studio City. Mm-hmm. So we drove to outside of Studio City towards Northridge area. And it was okay, by a gotcha. park. It was a park okay, in that area cute. where it wasn't. It was not a busy, busy park, so they were able to corner a certain section and do the scene there. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I, in my research of this show, I've kind of learned that um, a lot of times, if if a show is not based in LA, there's only like one little tiny section in LA that doesn't have or will show like won't show palm trees, so that you can get the idea that it's like Midwest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But apart from that, you got to go outside a, a little bit outside go. of LA. Yeah, a little bit outside. <laughs> and that's where they, they that's why they went to Northridge area because that park didn't have it just had basic trees and what have you and not I don't recall any having any palm trees or whatever. You know, yeah, I what. didn't see it. It yeah, totally looked really Midwest, nice. like, you know, yeah. green grass and, you know, small little road. So they always do a really good job of setting up. But I think that's really wonderful though, speaking of being on location that you got to be on lot forty eight, which is Leslie Nope's whole like where her wedding was, like which is her the whole premise of the show basically. Like she yeah. put a park on that show or on that uh lot. So that's awesome. Yeah. It was it was the uh, stage twenty one was where we shot the show. Amazing stage twenty one so at the lot, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and yeah. then also, I mean, being on the actual like location too, like on the field, the park itself mm-hmm. is like so great. I I would I need yeah. to I looked up where it was. So I when I get back into LA, I should um I should take a little Parks and Rec trip to visit all the filming <laughs> know, locations right? and some of the locations <laughs> that they shot it. Um, yeah, no, it was really. Um, Really, and you're talking about this as we're talking. Your my mind is picking up certain memories of of show. Some of it had nothing to do with my character, but yeah. what's his name character that had the the beautiful wife when we went to the party? I was hoping oh, I was going to be in that scene. Yeah, Jerry's character. Uh-huh. I wanted to be in that scene. Oh my gosh, the Christmas party! You mean? Yeah, yeah. When he had the party, I was my character was invited because it was you know the the the, the, the office department. people. 
but yeah, so that's the that's the one I wish I was invited to because I would have loved to have been in that scene with her and the girl and the daughters and all of them like, what is how did he land somebody like that? Because it was Christy Brinkley, the model Christy Brinkley played his yes. wife on the show. Hauser would that, have had a great reaction shot, I feel. If yeah. He- <laughs> <laughs> like you walk in and see it. everything and you give your yeah. classic Hauser like shocked well, face. <laughs> it would yeah. have been great. <laughs> I would have loved to have been a part of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, um, is there any other memory that, cause I pretty much have asked everything about, and thank you for staying on for so long. I just had to ask all welcome. these questions about the 19 no, episodes. My gosh. Um, uh, but is there you. anything else that's striking your memory that I didn't mention? Um, actually, you hit, you did your homework, Holly. I'm very impressed. <laughs> you did your homework. You. you were bringing up scenes. I was like, oh my God, I hope I remember. And then it triggered in my, my mind when I was like, oh yeah, that's right. This is what happened. But yeah. I, I really don't have, you covered pretty much everything. You covered awesome. pretty much everything. Thank well, you. I mean, I never expect anyone to like really remember everything. So like, I mm-hmm. always preface it or, or say afterwards, like, honestly, what you gave me was great because I mean, well, especially characters that are on for, you know, a millisecond of an actual Mm -hmm. scene or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. there's, it's still big to me. So it's like, I don't expect you to remember everything. You haven't watched it 100, you know, times. So anything you can give is great, but I loved it. It was so good. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking me back to memory lane and, and, um, reminding me of the impact that the show had with a lot of viewers because I, I'm, I'm not always, on top of it like that because i'm just mm-hmm. looking at other things and what have you and i'm always reminded of the impact that you know tv and certain shows had and especially during the, the pandemic people really caught on to yes. a lot of the um sitcoms and parks being one of them had a resurgence during the pandemic of people just binge watching it and it having a life of its own which i so appreciate yeah you know and so you reaching out uh my, my agent was like and you reached out to my agent and I thought, uh-huh. I, and they said, you know, you should do this. I was like, of course I'm going to do this. I had no intention of not doing it because yeah. I, 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 as an actor, I, and I read and I said, you were an actor as well. I was like, I always want to reach back and try to bring everybody into the fold and try to support the creative process. And because there's room for everybody mm-hmm. and there's room, an opportunity for everybody to shine and do what they do. So it was, it was, I was very, um, honored to come on your podcast and do this oh my gosh well it's right back at you we are so happy that we got to talk to you i mean people love the council hauser is so popular like if like when i tell people that i'm talking to hauser they're like oh my god what (laughs) (laughs) thank you thank you i had no idea but thank you yeah, honestly, I mean, and people uh, love Dexhart. Um, we we talked to him uh, as well, mm-hmm. and he was so Kevin funny. Simmons, yeah. Kevin, so, yeah. he's so not Dexhart. <laughs> oh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Which he is, is yeah. the best. I mean, yeah. he was so friendly, and he actually had some of the scripts. He said he kept some of the scripts, and he was showing us some of the things that he oh, remembered, really? and I was like, that's an incredible. And you know what? I think I might have reached out... Um, to, or I wanted I might have wanted to reach out like oh gosh it must have been a year ago now um but that might have been when you were on your break because I don't know if you had had your agents listed at the time or something so no I didn't I didn't have my okay. yeah I didn't I didn't so have I'm an so agent glad, time, again so, yeah. serendipity when it's meant to happen it's meant to happen when it's meant, exactly <laughs> and here we are have you been able yes. to get John on the show because he's he's terrific I haven't John reached Glazer? out to him yet. Yeah, I haven't you reached out to him yet because we haven't gotten to the thick of his scenes yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely will be reaching out. I hope that yeah. we can talk to him because I, I, I'm going to lose my mind because he was the craziest and the best. He is like, the craziest so. and he'll have stories for you because he's such a wonderful guy. He really is. Yeah. He kept us laughing. He kept us laughing in between scenes. Yeah. Have you kept in touch with anybody or, or do you ever randomly talk to them? No. Or I know you said you went to the play. <sighs> No, Kevin is the one that I kept in touch with the most, actually, because I'll run into him a few times because he doesn't live too far. I'm in West Hollywood. He's in Studio City. Okay. So I would run into him sometimes at restaurants or what have you, or, you know, we'd catch up. Man, I like, would we're lose Facebook my mind rich. if I saw you two at a restaurant. Are you kidding me? I would be like, <laughs> they're together! <laughs> yeah. So that's that's usually how we would see each other. And we're Facebook friends. So I'm always catching up with what he's doing and, and vice versa. So Sure. Yeah. Oh, I he's love that. One. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, did you get to talk to Amy at all, really, like on the side or anything like that? Uh, only in, during the drives, we would talk and we'd mainly talk about kids and because she knew I worked with kids. And sure. so we'd have that kind of conversation. Uh, but but I've learned when you're working on a show and you're guest starring, um, the lead actor has so much to do that you don't want to create opportunities to just do chit chat. If it's something mm-hmm. that's important to discuss, you discuss it. But mm-hmm. for her, because I know every scene, once we're done with our scene, she's on her mind is clicked to the next scene that she has to do and memorize and have all these lines to say. So mm-hmm. the times that we did get to hang out and, and talk was in between in between setting up the lights. Yeah. Um, and so when we're still in the scene and setting up the lights or when we're driving to location for something. Mm-hmm. But other than that, once our scene is done, she's on to the next thing because she's in practically every scene. Sure. Um, with the show and yeah. as one of the you know creators of it she had to make sure that uh everything so she had a lot of hats she was wearing while she was doing her performances yeah so, which is wild and i know that yeah. like people have talked about if they i don't know there was one person i can't remember oh gosh i forgot who it was now um someone an actor on the show uh said that they like were just so nervous they came in so nervous and um so you're not the only one <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> so and I think Amy like got this really because you didn't have any scene. Well, uh, like the first couple of scenes, I guess, um, were like the first one was with Amy. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless, though, she like I think she just sensed this energy that he was nervous and she just like said, oh, hey, this guy's name is whatever, whatever. And then she messed up the name. And, and then the guy was like, uh, it's actually and she's like, oh, I fucked up. It's it's something else. <laughs> And it just like <laughs> broke the tension. And I was like, that is so beautiful. To, that because, is beautiful. Uh, at the end That's of the great. day, That's like, who she is. That's yeah. yeah. And like she That's didn't have she to is. do that. I mean, at the end she of the didn't. day, like she I don't know, really reminds me that like if you are the leader, you are responsible for, you know, the environment and the yeah. you, you do set the tone. And same thing with Steve Carell, everything I've heard from about him on the office. And so it's it's really lovely to hear. No yeah, divas. it's <laughs> no diva. And that's the thing. I've been, I've been fortunate in all the shows that I've done and worked on. I've not had a bad experience in terms of having a diva moment. Parks is probably one of the most fun shows that I've worked mm-hmm. on. And the other show that I really loved, um, and it was um, because of Ellen Pompeo, was was mm. um, I did an episode, a cliffhanger oh, episode Grace. with uh, oh. with um, with Grey's Anatomy. And it was my character that pushed her into the water. And we had that whole scene and what have you. So <clears throat> she was absolutely very gracious and wonderful to work with and was so engaging and just one of the few actors that were curious about me as a person. Yes. Off when we were not when we were not shooting our scenes and we were on the downtime talking. She was just mm-hmm. absolutely gracious and really loved working with her. That's so good to so, hear. I yeah, know the Grey's Anatomy yeah. people are probably like, duh, but I am. Yeah. I watched the first couple seasons and then I fell off. Um, but yeah. I know it's a great show and I really respect yeah, it. Yeah, but, exactly. yeah, exactly. So, Amazing. Well, do you have yeah. any um, anywhere we can follow you on social media or anything that you'd like to promote at this moment of what you you're know, working on? Uh, I, I thank you for asking that. I'm working on that part of it because okay. I told you I'm just getting back into the business and I'm being told all those things that I should have in place. So yeah. I'm working on those things right now. Um, I so I don't you. have a platform yet, and I've been create. I'm working on a website because, again, I am just jumping yeah. back in, and it, things have changed when I was when I started in the business and have to get into the social media platform oh and what have you, and and do it that way. But it's exhausting. But yeah, I mean, I I have uh, I'm fully addicted to social media. It's awful. Like I I totally yeah. know. Like I I do give myself breaks and I try to turn my phone the other way so that. But mm-hmm. it's just like it's a it's an instinct. It was built to be addictive. So I honestly I kind of commend people that aren't on it. But at the same time, if you're like a day player actor or just mm-hmm. an actor in general, it's like yeah. it's nice to have that almost as like a digital resume in addition yeah. to you know Absolutely. your imdb and stuff um because imdb doesn't always show everything so no, it's, no. Yeah. Uh, you're right you're right i mean that's why i, I have to create a website because my manager's getting on me about that and also mm-hmm. now i just have You'll a quick question done. for you you do yes. musical theater i do yeah my hat's off to you it's one of the skills i wish i could do <laughs> i have a lot oh, yeah. of musical theater friends but i love 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 actually last night i went to see um, um, the Wiz, which is touring before it gets to Broadway. 
Is that the Amundsen, and, right? Or something? Yeah, it was at the, it was at the Pantages. Oh, Pantages. It's at the Pantages. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and a lot of my very close friends are musical theater performers. Yeah. But it's one of the gifts that was not given to me when I was in heaven <laughs> trying to get my lot, trying to come down here with gifts. That one was held, withheld from me, which was being able to stand up and sing and act and do all those things that musical theater people do so well. And I so enjoy that, that, that uh, medium. Of performance yeah. so oh my gosh um, thank you yeah. yeah it's it's hard um the auditions like i'm not a dancer um so i'm a mover i can follow a rhythm whatever mm-hmm. but these musical yeah, theater yeah. dancers that can truly do everything like mm-hmm. can dance sing and act i'm like i and the auditions i mean acting auditions are hard in general but then i when i audition for musical theater i mean mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's hours of preparation and then it's like sometimes you're hours waiting in line or waiting or whatever for the actual audition itself. And like I have, um, so audition season was kind of in like last month I did a bunch of, cause they do a lot of season um, auditions mm-hmm. and they can like, yeah, yeah. Where you want. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these were self tapes and like, you know, if you see them in different cities or whatever. Um, yeah. But, and it moves so fast. I mean, the, I, I booked my first regional show last year, um, which was so fun and lovely. It was like a newer play or newer musical mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was amazing. But yeah, we had two weeks to rehearse and then it was up. And I was like, yeah, right. oh my God. That, and that's like the norm. That's the norm. And to learn music that fast. I mean, oh I, I, my hat's off to you. It'll take me a month to learn one song so I can make sure <laughs> I hit every. Every so I can talk through every note that I'm supposed to talk through because I'm yes. not singing. So I, I mean, my hats off to you. Thank you. Yeah. It's so fun. I mean, it really is a passion, and every day is different. Every audience is different. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it it lights me up. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, good, 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 good. I can Yay. see that. Well, well, I will make sure that your um, IMDb at least is tagged okay. in our show notes and everything. Yeah, and then once you do. get the yeah. Instagram, follow us. We're we're on Instagram. Yeah. I can email you okay, so great. that you can follow us and we can you know keep up with Definitely. you and everything. And I'm um, on Instagram. I just it's just really Yvonne Strodane. Oh, so, you are? Yeah, yeah. Oh, just okay. Yvonne Strodane on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll find you. I'll find you. Yeah. And then I'll tag yeah. you and everything okay, so that people great. can follow you. All right, but Yvonne, thank you. thank you so much for coming. This was so great. Holly, I'm so glad that we had a spiritual moment too. I love. I know. You're my people, so I get it. Yeah, <laughs> you're my people too. And I and I got that energy from you just from when your email response. You can read people's energy on email in terms I think of. You can sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I I'm so so honored and grateful that you sought me out to get me on the show with you. Thank Yay, you. Yay! Thank you. And also, to be honest, like I don't. Like I- I'm very transparent on my emails. Like I speak, I talk the way that I text, and I text the mm-hmm. way that I talk. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's why I got that. I in got a corporate information, I-, I don't know. I mean, I I can do it in a corporate sending. I've done it yeah, before, yeah. but yeah. and I don't have smiley faces. But if I'm like you know doing something I'm really passionate about, you'll know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I and I totally got your energy. I was like, oh yeah, I would love to meet her. Thank you. Yay. Okay, well, Thank if you're you ever so in Nashville, much. keep me posted. We will I'll show will, you around or I'll definitely. tell you some good spots. Oh, to that go would be to. lovely. Thank you. I'm going to hold you for that too, Holly. <laughs> Listen, and then if I'm yeah. in, ever in LA, you, me, and yeah, Kevin definitely. We'll have to hang out. Yes. <laughs> Hit me up. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. All well, right. thank you so much. I appreciate you're you so welcome, much. Holly. Pleasure. Have a good day. To you too. Bye. Take good care. Bye bye. You too. Parking some pals and there's also therapy too.